Hello, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand. And I wanted to show you a cute um, Easter card I made using the gnome dies. <coughs> so here it is. And you just pull up on the hat or the ears and the little gnome slides out of the Easter basket. You can slide them back in. And then I've got some eggs in there as well. So this, the inspiration for this um, cute gnome came from um, a gonk that I got at um, Kmart. So here it is. And you can see I made a miniature version. So I call this a gonk because um, if you look it up online, um, if they don't have a face um, and just the nose is showing out, they're referred to as a gonk. Um, but if you have the face showing, it's called a gnome. And the current stamp set in the catalog is um, Friendly Gnomes. So with this stamp set, we do have a couple gnomes with their faces uh, showing, and then the one without the face. So um, to be correct, um, without the face, with just the nose showing, it's a gonk. So I saw these at Kmart um, last week. Hopefully you can see the whole thing. Really cute. Um, they just stand up with the little bunny ears. Um, I think they're like door stops or something like that. Cute decoration. And decided to make a similar one. So we got the little egg, the arms, everything. Um, I tried to match up with that one for a card. Um, so I'll show you how to make this card. And I've got some tips on embossing and um, heat embossing and dry embossing um, for this one. Everything I use in the video, I will um, put in the description below. So if you want to purchase any of the items, you can, um, if you're in New Zealand and don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, go to my website, michellecritchley.stampinup.net. Or if you're um, not in New Zealand, uh, you can look at stampinup.com to find a demonstrator near you. Um, or uh, if you're here in New Zealand and have a demonstrator, you'll be able to um, call them up and use the product codes that you see in the description below. So um, with this card, I've used a few different stamp sets um, and paper. And sorry about if you hear some bells in the background. I have a kitten about six months old that's playing with its um, toy. So I don't know if you can hear all the ring bells rattling, but that's my little kitten, Buckley. Um, so anyway, getting back to it. So um, what you're going to need is a standard base card. So here in New Zealand, we have um, A4 paper, which we cut in half and then score it to um, an A5 sheet and then fold that in half makes an A6 size card that fits our envelopes here. So wherever you are, just do your normal base card. Um, you'll need a white piece slightly smaller than the inside for the inside sentiment and then a piece of designer series paper um, to fit the outside so slightly smaller so in this case um, I'm using uh, this paper that is called Dainty Flowers designer series paper it was a free offer with the celebration that just finished um, in February but it had some um, it has some interesting design sheets, and some of them, like the one I used here, as you can see, it's like a half and half, so you can cut right down the middle and then use the different sections in your card. So that's what I've done with this card here. So I've got my card base, is Old Olive. Um, this time, just because I'd already had the card cut, um, lengthwise it's going to open this direction but if I cut it widthwise then I could have the card opening this way so it's exactly the same size just depends on how you cut your um, initial card stock <clears throat> for the inside um, I'm turning this card into a birthday card for my best friend um, who lives in Texas at the moment in the US so the other side of the world for me because I'm in New Zealand so um, I'm going to create this as a birthday card because this year her birthday happens to be on Easter weekend. Um, so I've already stamped the inside. Um, so I did it with the wishing you the most magical of birthdays stamp, that one there. 
and I did the little um, gonk here and colored it in with my Stampin' Blends. If you use your Stampin' Blends, you want to stamp the image in Memento Black ink and then color it before you stick it on because as you can see there, Stampin' Blends bleeds through. So if this was stuck down first and it bled through, you might see it through the cardstock. So you want to do that first. So then I've got a piece of designer series paper, which happens to be the same size as the white because I just want a little border of the green showing. So this is uh, 10 centimeters by 14.3 centimeters. Um, if you're in another country using imperial, you know, inches, um, just take off like maybe a quarter inch um, from your card size and you'll get or even maybe a half an inch, because if you take off a half an inch, you'll have a quarter inch either side of it. Um, if you take off a quarter inch, you'll have one eighth of an inch either side of it. So depending on how much of an edge you want. We don't want to stick that down yet, um, because we need to create our little mechanism to make our little gonk slide. There we go. So this was one of my first cards. I've got some tips um, to do it better. Now, to um, get the gnome, it uses the gnome dies. I use the gnome dies. And there's a hat die. There's these two that are the tops to mushrooms, and then there's a couple mushroom stems. But for my card, and I have a video about um, doing that as well, I've used them to create arms. And then we've got the little circles here, which are the perfect size for the nose. But it comes with two, and I always wondered why there were two, and I've made them into hands. I've got a video talking about making arms and hands as well. And then the face, I die cut already, and that was it. So you want two um, colored ones for the hands, one um, light one for the nose of the circles. Um, do one go with those two uh, mushrooms. They're slightly different sizes, which is good or you could have um, two of the same size if you want the face and the hat so I've already die cut all those I've die cut the um, face in our velvety white paper so it's got a bit of a um, nice feel to it I've done the blue hands to match the um, gonk that I got at Kmart and um, because I'm not sending the actual, um, I can't send this to her because it's way too big, um, I am going to just do the arms in the purple. Um, that's the fresh freesia. Uh, these I made match because I've actually given a few of these to some um, colleagues of mine with a matching card. So that's why I wanted it to match. I then also did a hat and bunny ears. Now the bunny ears um, come from the dies. This is the Design a Treat Box dies. I'm not sure if they're currently available. They were with our Christmas catalog. So with this one, they had like bat wings, you could have um, antlers for reindeer, and you could have bunny ears. So um, covers three different holidays basically. So I did the bunny ears with that die. This die also comes with a little oval die so if you have a look so there's all these numbers so you if you look at some of my other videos about the advent boxes I use this one with the numbers on well, their backwards either way um, and so it die cuts the numbers in a circle but there's also this uh, oval and there's also this oval die that you can cut out ovals as well so you could give yourself a solid background behind the numbers I guess um, and I use this oval die to make myself some eggs. So the little egg in there. So I've used that die, which I'm gonna show you a tip for. The other thing um, <clears throat> is from the palms dies. I've used this one here that looks like grass. Now I've tried to, um, that's how I got the grass there, and I've used the colors that are in the paper. So if you have a different background, um, image that you're using, just pick up some of the greens that are in there. So this one has old olive and mossy meadow. I've already gone and die cut those two pieces. 
So we've got those to layer up to give you some dimension and to blend in with the background colors there. And the other set that I'm using, so that was that die set. That die set happens to match up with the Paradise Palms. I'm using the two stamped images from there as well, the little grass, and um, that could be grass or beach, water, whatever color you want to stamp with that little image there. But I'm gonna use both of those in the old olive ink um, to give me a bit more grassy background because with this image, it's higher up with the flowers and I want the background to blend away so it's not as noticeable. So you'll see in a minute, I'll stamp that. And then I brought in the dies from, um, what is that die set? Oh. They match up with the Cheerful Basket set. I love the set with the cat. And I'm, of course, I love cats. I was just talking about my kitten making noise in the background. But there's a die set called Full Basket Dies. And in that set, um, you can, the dies for that set will cut up these images, but there's some extra dies in there that will cut out bits to make a basket. So I'm going to do that with, um, I'm going to cut that out with, um, this is Sahara Sand cardstock. <clears throat> but before I do that, I'm going to show you a little tip. Um, because if you have a look, now I've done this in other videos with different um, embossing, uh, embossing folders as well as some dies. So see how um, it looks like there's a um, wood-like look to that basket? So this die here has embossing. So some of the dies cut as well as they press in to emboss your cardstock. Um, unfortunately, this one doesn't. It just gives you slats, which is fine. But if I just purely emboss that as is, you'll have this color with some impressed lines, which is quite good, but to make it stand out more, if you put ink on your die before you run it through your die cutting machine, it will press the ink into the embossed parts and it will make it um, stand out more. So the way you do that, is you take your ink pad. So I'm doing this with crumb cake. I could do it with the Sahara sand, but crumb cake just gives it a, a different brown. So I think it gives it a better look. So taking your ink pad and you want to have your take a pick tool with the tacky end. So one end of the take a pick tool has got like a little tacky end. That's good for picking things up. Um, so you want to Take your die, whatever type of die it is that has um, embossing on it. So you're going to get those um, ridges there. Put it on your ink pad. You can take your pick-a-tool and push it down a bit if you want. This one's quite a big one, so I'm just going to give it a bit more pressing with my fingers. If you press too hard, you get the ink in the background part. And I'm just going to then gently get it to the edge so I can pick it up. I don't want to get my fingers on the other side. Oh, see now I got a line in there, so I'm gonna, got the line from the edge, so I'm just gonna pick it up gently. Oh, it's like my finger in it, but that's okay. So, you see how I've got ink on those raised parts? That'll probably give me an interesting look, that line there. That that line showed up because I hit the edge of the ink pad when I picked it up. But um, so see, there's ink showing up there. Then you want to just gently place it onto your cardstock. So you don't want to, um, you just want to put it down and not move it. Because if I put it down and move it, it's just going to smear that ink. So I just want to gently place it on my cardstock. And then I'm going to die cut the other piece as well. Okay. So I'm going to go die cut that, and then you're going to see how it looks afterwards. Okay. So I've die cut those two pieces. And there we go. And see that line actually gives it some interest there. So now 
those embossed sections actually have some color on them. And you can pull the grooves out. I could just leave the grooves in if I want it, but I'm going to take them out because I'm going to do a little weaving with this basket here. So I'll take those pieces. And with the die, you can simply rinse it off in the sink or just take your chamois. My chamois are very stained because I've used them for years. Just press it into your chamois and it takes the ink off, ready to go. No ink on there. Yep, all the ink's gone. So it's that easy to clean um, because it's a water-based ink that we're using. And I'll just put that pad away before I do something. Um, with it, I'll do some st more stamping before I move on to doing that. And I'm just going to have a scrap piece because I'm going to stamp off the bottom. So as I said, um, I just want to get some color at the bottom of this paper. If you have different paper or you make up your own background, stamp some images on your background, you might not need to do this. But using the old olive, I'm going to use this interesting image. And it's one of those distinctive ones, so it doesn't have a solid, doesn't come out solid. I'll show you there. So see how it gives you kind of a different shading? That's, that's what the distinctive stamps are for. Um, they give you some realistic shading. So I'm just going to stamp this down towards the bottom a few times just to give some color down there. And I could just stamp it off a few times there as well. So that's just going to make it look like there's grass greenery behind um, our image. And then to add to it, I'm going to actually stamp some grass. So I'm just going to stamp some grass. It won't be that noticeable because it's the same color, but just in case anybody has a close look at the card, it does look like there's a bit of a meadow going on. There we go. So, oh, and before I put that away, I'm going to stamp the words. So I'm stamping the words, there's no gnome one better than you. And I'm going to stamp it at the top of the card. Now, I could stamp in a heat emboss that if I want, but I thought I'd just go with this. Okay. And again, same color, so I'm keeping with the same color scheme. And so if you have a closer look at that, so now the bottom looks like we've got some grass there. Okay. <coughs> now, before I forget, because I'm afraid I'm going to put the card together and forget the most crucial part to it, is we need to make a slit so our um, gonk can move up and down, our bunny gonk. So... Get your trimmer out. Um, this is the best tool from Stampin' Up! because you can um, you can score with it and you can cut with it and you can do things like this. So this is 10 centimeters wide. So whatever width you're using, find the center, which would be five centimeters. So I'm gonna put this edge up to five centimeters there. And I only want about a five centimeter line because um, the length of the line will determine how far down um, it goes and how far up. Because if I had a real long line, it would just keep pulling further up, plus you would see it. So I want it so it doesn't go too far up, just far enough that you can see the bottom of him. And I don't want the line to be showing there. And the line down here, it'll be covered up um, with the basket. So I want it basically in the middle and maybe a centimeter from the bottom. So there are measurements on the side here. It comes with inches on the side, this side here, but you can buy a metric one, which I have done. So I'm doing it about 13 at the bottom. Now you can, if you don't do it long enough, you can snip a bit later on, but if you do it too long, you can't really take away from the length. So I wanna do about five centimeters, so one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, is that about right? 
from about there to about there. Yep, so I'm going to go from about 13 up to 8 on this side part here. Okay. So now I have the slit. That's going to be the mechanism to allow him to slide. Okay. So, let's get my stamp sets out of the way. Let's start making things. So, we'll make our gnome. And with the ears, you notice these ears have the insides on them. So, if I leave it with ears like that, you're going to see through it, which doesn't seem very realistic. You can't see through rabbit ears. So what you can do is you can just take a scrap piece of paper, um, you know, like a basic white paper, using the bit that remains from the cutout. You can either trace around the ears or trace around the cutout part, trace around your cardstock, and then cut out within the lines a scrap bit. So I'm just going to glue that onto... The back of the ears and then if you keep the inside bits you can then glue them in place but again um, my friend that I'm sending this to um, I'm not sending the original um, thing I got from Kmart so I think I might just leave the inside white there's my glue so easiest way is just to put some glue around the edges of your I almost called them antlers, ears, if the glue decides to participate. Come on, glue. There we go. Sometimes you just need to pull out the bit that's clogged. Just around the edges there. And then I'm just going to pop my white bit in place. Turn it over to make sure no white is showing on the sides. If there is, you can just trim it off if you need to. So I got that done. Then the nose, I forgot about the nose. So you can die cut that circle for the nose in whatever color you want, but a lot of our colors are really dark and I wanted the pale nose of this guy. So I use the, um, sometimes you can use petal pink or I use, Um, Hail Papaya Stampin' Blends and I just scribbled all over some white cardstock and then as you see I've made a few of them and then I die cut that piece out of there so it gives me the nice pale look of the nose so if that you didn't notice before and I know I've mentioned it in other videos because I've got lots of videos I've used these dies and the gnomes for. Um, so when you look at the image, there we go. It's got the nice lines to be have the beard, but you see there's a nose image and there's that kind of a, almost looks like a mustache above the nose, which doesn't make sense. That's actually a guideline for where to put the hat. And the center is a guideline for the nose. So just put your glue right in the center there where you see the nose. And then you can pop the nose right into that center part. That's where your nose fits. Now we'll stick the ears behind our hat. So we're just going to put some glue on this section. And just put the hat on high enough where you don't see the edges of the rabbit ears coming out. So Now my original ones, that's where I stopped. But I find pulling it up and down, it's a little bit flimsy. So I decided for this one, I have cut a second hat. So now, now that I got the ears in place, I'm actually going to put a hat, sandwich them between the hat, which will give me a bit more strength for pulling it up and down. Um, you don't have to do this step, but I'm finding um, the other one, the hat starting to get bent and things. So then this is the back, and I'm just going to stick that hat there and just press it down. What I do sometimes, which is why you probably notice my blocks look very dirty, um, is I use them to help press things down. So I just put the whole block down to 
help press things down. And that's how I end up with glue all over my blocks. <laughs> okay. Now that I've got my hat in place, I'm going to just put the glue on those lines. Actually, um, I'm going to put the arms together first because I found slipping the arms under the edge of the hat was um, difficult once it was glued down. So we'll do our arms. And to make the hands match the little hands on the gonk that I had, so he's got like, it almost looks like he's got mittens on, just take your little oval and you just need to cut out what looks like, it's hard to do on camera, a thumb. So hopefully, oh, I bent it a bit. Hopefully you can see that looks like a thumb. Now don't do exactly the same on the other one, otherwise you'll be two left hands or two right hands. So the other one, so that's actually going to be my right hand. So the other one, I want the thumb up the top. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to come in and then come back out to get my thumb. So there's my other side. Bit of a pointy thumb, but you can fix it up. You could probably put both together and cut it in one go, which now that I think about it, that would have made much more sense. <laughs> um, but you definitely want to have them looking opposite. So we've got two. So they're not both the same. You don't want them both, you know, like that. You could just turn it over, I guess. Okay, now we're going to put our arms on. So I didn't color these arms. This one, what I did is I just turned them over because if you have a look, you got some embossing on the, that, the little mushrooms because they're supposed to be mushroom tops. Um, so I turned them over and just did some white lines to match the, the one that I bought. So I find when you're use, doing things on small pieces is to put the adhesive where you want it to go not on the piece that you're going to pick up because otherwise you might get adhesive all over yourself. So if you put the adhesive where you want it to go and then just press the piece on top of it. And so I'm just going to put it on this end of the hand and press the adhesive on top of the hand. Oh, a bit too much adhesive there. Okay, now we need the eggs. I forgot all about eggs. So the eggs, I, I'm using this circle, oval rather, to do the eggs. Now I've come up with a lot of very interesting variations on eggs. This one had stripes. Now you could just use your um, pens, do the oval and draw some lines to make the stripes. But this one, the stripes are white and they look a bit raised. So I thought, hmm, looks like embossing. So I came up with all these embossed striped eggs. And then I've even come up with a way to do dots on them. And a few of them I've die cut out of um, designer series paper. So that's out of designer series paper. So I'm, and then this one, even I went so far as to have checkers. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I also did a quick tip video that shows you how to do it quickly, but I'm going to show you how to make one of these before we finish. Actually, I'll finish up the gnome because I can just put one of these eggs in his hands and then I'll show you how I made all these interesting looking eggs. So what color should we put? Uh, I think I think it looked good with the pink spotted egg. Okay, so put your egg down on his beard, and then you want your arms to be coming from the edge. Now, remember I said we've got those lines that shows where the hat goes, so you want the arms to be coming just touching where the hat's going to be, so the hat's going to go slightly over the arms. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue there, and then put one there. And the other reason for using glue is you can wiggle it into place. Where's my other arm? Losing my arm amongst my eggs. And then another arm. 
We'll just wiggle it so it looks like he's holding his little egg. What I like about these little mushrooms is it looks like the little um, edges, the little lines you have on the edge of your sleeves. That embossing, really cool. And now we're just going to put glue right where it'll go over his nose and the top of the top of the beard and we're just going to slip that into place and bring in a block because my fingers are getting sticky and I'm getting stickiness all over that. That's okay because I have a little rubber here that I can gently rub off any excess glue. All right, so that's our little gnome done. And now let me show you how you can make all these cool looking eggs. So these are obviously cut out of designer series paper, um, which is one cool way to do it. But these I did with just white embossing powder and my Versamark. So I'm going to make some purple eggs. So here we go. Got a piece of purple. Make sure your cardstock is big enough to fit whatever die. So this technique you could do for any die. Like if I want it to do um, the feet of the gnome, there's a se separate die that does the legs. So this die would cut out the legs. If I want it to have maybe white stripes on there, I would make sure my paper is big enough like it is here. In fact, I could even do that as a sample as well. Um, <clears throat> And on your paper, first you want to do your embossing buddy so you don't get um, static electricity putting your powder where you don't want it to be. Then you need your Versamark. So there's the Versamark pad. And then you also need to have your powder ready. So you could do this in any color you want. I was thinking, oh, it might look quite good in um, golds and silvers. Um, or even black. So I've just got the white powder. I'm just going to open that up, have it ready for us. So <clears throat> I think I'll do it long ways because I might die cut those legs and use it for another project. So using just the lid from your Versamark, put that there. Come on, out of the way. So using the lid, we can use the skinny side or the long side, but because I want to do more than one on here, I'm going to do the long side. I might just do it off this side here. So if we have that, and I'm going to do like one egg, yeah, that'll be good. So ink up the edge of your lid. So you can't really see it because Versamark is see-through, but it's getting sticky. You can see how it's kind of sticky. And then simply press that down where you want it to be. And then ink it up again. And then move down slightly and press it again. Now this is called a watermark ink because if you just do it on normal cardstock, it just makes it slightly darker so you can see what's considered a watermark. Um, basically because it looks like you spilled water on it. But also on images, um, you have that faint image behind some pictures and things that's a watermark so people can't steal the ideas. So I'm just inking that up and just coming in slightly down, further down than where I was a minute ago. Now this lid is curved slightly, so it's going to give us an interesting look. So once you have done all that you want to do, so see all that? Now I could leave that to dry and that's just going to stay looking with that wet look. But now I'm actually going to pour powder on it. So I'm going to pour the white embossing powder on it. I don't want too much on this top end because I have a line that I don't want to use. And so I've got my embossing powder there. And now I'm going to go heat emboss it. So I've now heat embossed it and I can go die cut it. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you another trick 
for this. So this is going to be our legs and an egg. So we'll do an egg and the legs there. If you want to get the checkered look, I could have done this before I heat embossed it, but um, I'm going to, on this end, just to give us that look, I'm going to put some more lines. And yes, you can um, emboss after you've already heated it because it's just going to stick to the sticky part, the powder. So I've just put lines just on that end and I'm just going to pour some powder there. And so it's, it's stuck down in a few spots and I'm going to heat that in a second. But before I do that, the other trick is using the ball end of your pick, pick a tool, take a pick tool, just get some ink on there and just dot it onto your cardstock. So I'm just touching the cardstock with the sticky Versamark tip. I'm not doing a big press, I'm just doing enough to get the powder to show up. This one I'm actually doing in a kind of a grid pattern. It might look interesting. Okay. And I'm just going over a few of them. Don't look like they picked up a lot of ink. You could even probably just um, drag the end if you want. Uh, is that going to be big enough? Yep, that will be. And so now I'm just going to put some powder on that part there. And then I will have a speckled egg. So that will come up as a speckled egg. And see how this powder is sticking there? That's because I didn't do the buddy um, this time. So if you don't do the embossing buddy, you end up with stray powder. And if you don't clean it off, it will just melt on that section. So I'm just going to flick off that extra powder because I don't need to have melted blob on there. So I'm going to heat this up and then I'll die cut it and show you what it looks like. Okay, so that worked out good. So I've die cut my pieces. So now I have some stripy little bottoms for my gnome. So if I want it, I could put those bottoms on this note, but this card if I pull them out, you're not really going to see his legs, so I'll keep that for another card. And then I came up with um, three different type of purple Easter eggs. So we've got stripes. The checkered part didn't come out quite as well. It's better to do the um, everything before you drop the powder on it. So to get the nice even look is to go one way with the edge of your um, lid and then go the other way and then put the powder on. But it does give an interesting look. And then I've got some speckles. So those are my eggs. So that's the die cutting done. Now let's put things together. So first of all, I've got my basket I'm going to put together. So these are three different sizes. That was the second die that cut the three different sizes. Um, and you can just glue them straight across. It gives an interesting look. Just glue them like that or you can weave it through like what I've done on my original card so I've just woven it through and um, to give it a break up of that you could weave them all through and get a really interesting look but for this I'm just going to glue them straight down so again put put it where you want it to go because of these gaps um, I don't want to glue, put the glue on the back because there'll be a lot seeping through the center. Now this die set also comes with a die that will cut the outline of the basket. So if you don't want the basket to be see-through, you could just glue it straight down, cut a solid piece like that to have on the back and glue everything straight onto that piece. But I want it to be slightly see-through so um, when somebody looks at the card, they can see, oh, there's something behind there. I wonder what that is. So just figure out where you want the next slat to go and just put glue on the little piece.
pieces that you're going to put it on top of. Otherwise, the glue will seep through the center if we were to put it right onto the slat. And then the top one, I'm just going to come through the center edges and just put that top one there. If you did this in different colors, you could have an interesting looking colorful basket. I just went with neutral tones. Okay, so there's the basket. Now, we need to put our gnome in here before we put it together. To do that, you just need a couple scrap pieces of cardstock. So these, I believe, are a centimeter. Yeah, they're about a centimeter by five-ish. Um, and that's usually what's left over when I cut the piece for the inside from my A4 cardstock. Um, I'm usually left over with big, long, one centimeter strips. So I cut a couple into about five centimeters and just fold them slightly about two thirds up. Or um, so fold like one third over. They don't have to be exact, um, but you can just fold each on top of each other to make them closer in size. So this is not going to be seen. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. So just give it a good burnish. Okay, and then slide the long part through your slit. So you got the long part going through the slit. So the long part's in the back, short part's in the front. Now the thing is when you fold it over, you don't want it to be wider than the um, image that you're putting on the front. So if you're doing something other than a gnome, this will work with anything else. But the front part is going to be glued behind, so you don't want the front part to be too long. You don't want it to be seen. So whatever that size is needs to be small enough. So it can be trimmed off if you find that you have it too long. Put the other piece in. So I've got the one on top of the other, and that helps with um, stopping it. And I don't have to worry about trying to um, have them evenly lined up um, on the back. So you just want it to be pushed right up to the edge. You don't want it to be sticking out too far. And you could even on the back, you could just give them a little tug to make them come right up nice, even so that line is right between the folds. So that line that's cut is touching right on the edge of the folds. Don't do anything else with the back. The front, you're gonna put some glue on. So we're gonna figure out where our gnome is and where we put him, he's gonna be hiding in the basket. So we don't want him too far down, but um, we want him far enough that when we cover him with the basket, but we can put the basket up higher. So I'm noticing if I stick that yeah, about there, that looks good. So put your glue on your little slats and don't go too overboard with the glue. You could put tape on here, um, but I find it quicker with the glue. Just don't put it too close to the edge. You don't want it to seep off and make it not work. And then you're just gonna set your gnome on top of your little slats and give them a good press down. This fuzzy beard is picking up all the little bits of fluff around my table. That's what you get when you have a cat. I actually have two cats, but I got a kitten that's being crazy. You can turn it over if you want and just give it a good burnish on either side to make sure that it's adhering to your image. So you, as I said, you can do it with any image, this one. And then just check that you can slide it up. So because of where the slit is, he only goes that far. So it's only gonna go down as far as the slit. Yep. So it's not gonna go any further down because the paper's keeping it there and it won't go further than the top. So he doesn't slide very far. If you find that you want him to slide further, you can just come in with your paper snips and cut a little bit more um, here if you want. But I didn't want him to go too far up because 
I didn't want legs on him and I didn't want him to be seen. So when he's down here, I'll have my basket there covering him and the grass. And then when he pulls up, I want the basket to be where you can still see him. So now you have to figure out the placement of the basket. So I think that's pretty good. And then when he goes down, I want him to be fully hidden. Okay, so that's pretty good. So before I put the stuff on the top, I'm now going to stick this on the card base because I find it's easier to decorate the multi-layers once um, your front's down because if we decorate the front of it and then try to stick it down, we might squish some things that are popped up. So with this, I use my tear and tape. Um, you could use your glue. Doesn't really matter, but I don't want anything to seep over and block those um, bits there. If you find when you do it that these are really long and coming too close to your adhesive, just snip them shorter. As long as you know there's a little bit hanging over, it's not going to come out. Well, hopefully, it won't come out. I haven't tried to pull it out, <laughs> but um, you don't want your strips to be so long that they touch the edge. You could pop this up on um, foam if you want, um, but I want it to be nice and flat and hold it in place because the basket's going to be popped up. So I'm going to do my tab, tab method. So if I have bad placement, I can readjust it. So when you're out and about doing things, um, see what you see that can inspire you into making a card. Um, as soon as I saw the gonks at Kmart, they call them gnomes, but um, I immediately thought of the gnome um, set we have and the dies and thought, oh, I could make one like that because I knew I had the bunny ears from the Christmas one. So. Except for the word gnome in that title, in theory, somebody that's never seen the card before will just think there's a bunny in the basket. A bunny with a funny hat. Okay, so there's our gnome. We can slide him up and down, up and down, up and down. He slides so much better with that extra hat on because this one here, it, it's too flexible. It bends. It bends too much when I go to slide it. So definitely put the hat in the back. So see here, he's hiding, and you don't really know that there's a gnome there. So you're thinking, it's an Easter Bunny, and when it comes out, it's like, oh no, it's a gnome. Um, so this one here might know it's a gnome. All right, so I'm going to put the inside in before I forget. Sometimes you forget those things. But that's why I colored it in advance, so I didn't have to spend time coloring it while you wait it. And a lot of times for the inside, I only do a bit of adhesive on each side because it's not going to be touched as much as the outside might be. So just check the sides that don't have adhesive that look like they're in the right spot. And when you're happy with those two corners, then you can press down on the ones with the adhesive exposed and then pull it up. Nice straight. So much easier doing that. Okay, so there's our gnome. Now, another thing I forgot to mention, you do need um, the um, foam adhesive strips. Okay. They come in a pack with two sections and a little goes a long way. If you don't have these, you can use your um, dimensionals. And if you've ever noticed um, the sides, um, if you want, you can just snip straight along the side and you're gonna get the same effect as having an adhesive strip. So I've already taken off some of the sides of this using it um, over and over. And so like this is the minis. And so see, there's this whole section here that ha they're not individually cut off. So you can just take your scissors and cut a strip. So I've done that on that side there and use those strips 
Um, it's easier to do it with a strip than just doing straight dimensionals because you don't want to be touching the edge of the image that's coming out. So whatever image you put in there, you have to make sure it's not too wide. You need to have room on the edge to um, put some adhesive. So get your adhesive strip, put it close to the edge, and we're going to trim that off. And then I'm just going to put this one on that edge. So you don't want anything in the middle because you don't want anything to block it. Now, I'm not going to put adhesive at the bottom because see how far down his beard goes? So without anything at the bottom, he can slide right down. He can slide all the way down there. It's not going to be, matter because nothing's blocking the bottom. So you can put your basket in place. And before I push it down really hard, I'm just going to gently sit it there. I'm just going to check that his arms aren't catching the edges, so they're not. That's good. So I'll just check that he slides up and down through the basket. And then I'm going to press those edges down. Okay. Now I'm just going to put the grass on and finish decorating. So the grass. Um, I'm just going to overlap it on the front here. You could put some adhesive strips on the edge if you're worried about them getting squished. Um, but you don't really need to. So having a look of where I want it to go, I'm just going to put some glue just on that part there. And I'm just going to slide that over. So these pieces are slightly smaller than the bottom width of um, your cardstock. So having them overlapping left to right, it looks like different types of grass. So now this one, I'm going to overlap that direction. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down in the part that should overlap. Maybe a little there. And then just set it aside. Slide it into place. There we go. So you could put dimensionals under there if you're worried about those parts sticking out. But now that I've got that, I can slide my gnome right down to the bottom. So looking at that, except for the word gnome there, you're thinking, oh, there's a bunny in the basket. And you can pull it out, and it's like, no, it's a gonk. Um, now I've got all these eggs. Now I've got more eggs than I possibly need because I was having a good play and making another video showing how to do it. So I quite like that one. I'm going to just plan where I'm going to put my eggs. Maybe tuck a red one down in there. That's also why I didn't put glue underneath the um, grassy bits so I can tuck things behind. Um, not sure if I'm going to go with those. Uh, maybe have a blue one hiding there, and a purple can hide there. What about a green stripey one? So yeah, just have fun with it. Do whatever you want with your eggs. Um, might put the green one over here. Green one and a blue one, speckly, and then maybe another blue one by the pink. So I'm going to stick all those down, and then I've got some that I can put on the inside as well. Slide my gnome down into place. And so I'm going to pop those with some dimensionals and some... Some with dimensionals and some I'm just going to stick straight down. So just decide where you want your eggs to go. My other cards, I didn't do as many eggs, but this one I just went a little crazy with the eggs. Keep in mind, you don't want them coming down below your grass. So, And then this guy here, I'm just going to put dimensional on him. Mini dimensional. 
helps to talk to your um, craft supplies, give them names, male, female, etc. A little bit of glue behind this guy. Flip it in there. So, kind of just a really cool Easter egg hunt going on here. And the big Easter egg will be the gnome hidden inside that you don't realize is there. Until you slide it out. And some more on this guy. So hopefully I taught you something new today. I quite like the trick with the um, first mark. Never thought about that. Before I was doing this, I just thought, oh, I want some Easter eggs, but I don't want to sit and color them, and I didn't have an egg stamp. There is a bunny and an egg stamp available from Stampin' Up. I just don't have it because I don't buy everything. Even though I am a demonstrator, people think, oh, you get it all because we get it at a discount. But there's not enough day days in the year and hours in the day to do that many projects. So there. There we go. There's gnome one better than you. And you got your little bunny gnome, which is actually a gonk. And then we can open it up, wishing you the most magical of birthdays. I had thought about maybe trying to put an egg in his hand, but this one's a birthday one. So I have all those extra eggs left over I can use for something else. I hope you enjoyed that and got some good ideas from there. Um, here's my other one. The Easter one. So I might add some more eggs to the Easter one. And here is the inspiration for that. So please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos. I do have some tip videos on um, making those eggs as well as doing the arms etc for the gnomes. Um, that would have been put up last year because um, I did a lot of Christmas things with these uh, gnome dies. And another one that I did, so this one has the legs on it. So same paper, and I did the gnome, but I put the legs on it, and then I put a little wobbly behind, so he just wobbles there. And that's an Easter one. I might put some Easter eggs on here. Might add decoration at the bottom of that one. So thanks so much for watching, and make sure you uh, subscribe to be notified when I have new videos. I do a monthly video. Um, at, on the first Thursday of the month with uh, other demonstrators around the world called the Global Video Monthly Video Hop. So that'll be coming out soon. Um, with, and we have different themes. And then I do other videos when um, I have time and I come up with inspiration and ideas. So thanks so much for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make a bunny gonk. Bye-bye.